You think that's fucking cool? Now, I just gotta say, I recently got a PC, right there. I just gotta say, fuck consoles now. Fuck consoles. They're they're just, they're just inferior to PCs. This shit. Fuck this. This garbage. Hold on. The garbage belongs in a fucking garbage bag. <sighs> that that game is extra garbage. Man, this is a good sandwich. Anyway, what were we again? Fucking garbage. It belongs in the trash. PS4, more like PS no more. Garbage, <laughs> fucking path of radiance, <laughs> worthless. Shin Megami Tensei, Shin Megami Tensei, Shin Megami Tensei, it's another Shin Megami Tensei. Man, why do I have so many of these games? They're garbage. Final Fantasy, more like. Final, that's the Final Fantasy y'all have about PC games. I mean, I mean console games. Fucking N64, more like, more like N60 no more. <laughs> Fuck those, dude. Let's record a real, let's record a real game. Real PC game, man. Hold on. Where's my, where's my, uh... I wasn't in the gaming scene when Half-Life was first released. After all, I was just a little baby boy. I know about the impact, but I did not feel it myself, and a lot of people already know about the impact. Half-Life is well known amongst people for the impact that it had, and that every person wants a third game. So instead of taking into account the impact the game had, I'm going to be judging Half-Life just as a game. The game is only slightly younger than me, and when you're as old as me, chance would have it that you have aged poorly just as I did. I would argue, however, that Half-Life has aged much better than I have, and not just because I'm fucking retarded. Where I feel the game has shown its age the most is in the controls. You move very quickly and slide just a bit when stopping or trying not to walk forward too much. And one other thing that is very noticeable is that all the character dialogue is way fucking drowned out by everything else. What have really benefited from some subtitle options are just like making the dialogue louder. Any other things that have shown age are what I can only assume are gameplay choices of the time that might not be popular anymore, which is uh, subjective. And like I said, the game had such an impact. Maybe it didn't even use popular choices for the time, but instead inspired new ones. So fuck me. I'm not very good at first person shooter games. Not so bad that I'm comparable to that Cuphead guy, but bad enough that if you pitted me against any other gamer in a match of Halo, it's more than likely I would not be crowned the victor. Even with that in mind, I would still say Half-Life is challenging. Enemies can be tough to kill, the environment itself can betray you on any turn, and there is a little bit too much platforming and walking on tight ledges. Which when you move a little bit too much like I said, can be more difficult than it should be. On top of all this, the game has some very cheap deaths. Enemies can spawn right in front of you sometimes, leaving you little time to react, and the environment gives way a bit too quickly on occasion. Some of the game's difficulty is not so cheap. Some of it is challenging enemy design, limitations of the weapons you have, the ammunition you get, and when you find life packs or how many there are. Now whether frustratingly cheap or fair, the difficulty adds to the powerlessness and tension that you feel as a player. Your situation is grim, and there is an overwhelming feeling that the enemy is way superior to you, and I would say that that's the game's driving force. The enemy is better than you. You're on a mission, you're in a battle just to survive, and everything is trying to stop you. You're just a theoretical physicist that got into the middle of a huge mess. You shouldn't feel powerful. Everything about your situation is shown to you in-game, not through cutscene. All the characters speak in real time, all the enemies kill in real time, which is a good way of immersing you into the game, making you feel like you're more of a part of it. It's not necessarily telling you a story, 
It's letting you experience the story. Not to say a game telling you the story is bad, I just find this interesting. However, the drawback is a lack of complexity in the story. It's not as in-depth as I think it could be. Even though I say that, it still has some interesting plot points and twists. Things like learning more about the Black Mesa compound and its secrets as you go on, and learning about what your enemy actually is. It is an interesting story, just not one that's as indulgent. One thing that I have to get off my chest is that the music is not very well used. I'm not saying the music is bad, because it's not bad. There just isn't a lot of music. One of the things I do in my reviews is use music exclusively from the game, or franchise, or franchise in the review. Usually I'm pretty successful in doing so, but there's not a lot to work with here. I went through the soundtrack and a good number of the tracks are ambient noise or just sound effects. So this might be the first game I have to use outside music sources for. I don't know. Did you make it work editing Alex? In the game, I would go so far to say that the music is misused. When it came in a lot of times, it felt out of place. Either the wrong track, either the wrong time to put a track in, or the wrong song to put with the situation. It's not a big deal though, because it doesn't use a lot of music in the first place, and it doesn't really hinder the experience that much. The game's level design is based around smaller objectives or challenges that lead to a larger objective. Like small puzzles that you have to work through, a maze-like tunnel railroad system, or rooms full of enemies, which lead to things like just making it to the surface, defeating giant green tentacle monsters, or shooting a rocket up into space, which really makes the game seem more challenging with just how much effort it takes to complete each mission, which still isn't even the big picture. Again, giving off feelings of powerlessness and tension. Every room is a fucking challenge. There are no breaks. Something could be waiting around every corner. You trudging along anticipating your next health pack, entering a new room, almost being scared to step foot in it. One wrong move and you could die. Or maybe it's just nothing and you can finally get that health pack you wanted. Or some more ammo. You can run through the game fast. You can. The game will let you. But the only thing stopping you from doing so is you. Your own fear, your own wariness of what lies ahead is what stops you from just running and gunning. And I don't think that many games have that much control over the player unless they artificially put that control in. So yeah, I don't know. Two fucking thumbs up for Half-Life and how insanely well designed the levels are. I'd say the two points where Half-Life is the most tense, or when you feel the most powerless, is at the beginning and the middle. It sets you up as just going to a day of work. It shows you around the Black Mesa compound, and then once you get to work, it goes to shit real quick, and you're totally helpless with no weapons until you find the crowbar. So a lot of people know about the crowbar being the melee weapon in Half-Life, and I think they did that uh, the argument that I see is they did that because a crowbar is a more realistic weapon that you would find in, in like a science laboratory or whatever. But I personally think that even though it may be more realistic, a crowbar is way fucking better than a knife. And I'll show you how. Here we've got our, our test subject, Mr. Pumpkin right here. And I feel like a pumpkin uh, really emulates a, a crab head zombie, you know? Like, a, a regular human skull is fucking weak, but a crab head, crab's got nice hard layers on the outside to protect themselves from a knife, but not a crowbar, because this is a fucking crowbar. I don't know if you've ever used a crowbar, but that shit's heavier than it looks. So let's get started, alright? I'm gonna put on my, my trusty fucking coat here. Hey, Paul! Ah! Look, look at that. Look at that. You just, you, you just don't come back from that. That's dead. I killed it. Then as you fight, you gain a small arsenal of weapons to use. A lot of different choices. You start learning when it's appropriate to use what weapon, what enemy is weak to a certain weapon. Then you go fight this enemy that you've never faced before. Some female ninjas, which I mean, why are the ninjas female? But you face them and you win unless you gave up and you continue on and bam, you're back to nothing. No weapons again. This time, you actually know your enemy 
and you know if you come face to face with an enemy, you're fucked. Then you gain an arsenal again, and you find this new enemy that's a piece of shit. Now this point has nothing to do with tension, I just needed to point out how much I fucking hate this enemy. And since I just talked about your arsenal of weapons, I'd just like to say, I think the game could benefit from a few more long range weapons, instead of just this... Tranquilizer? They, they call it a tranquilizer in the game, but... It sure doesn't fucking seem like one. Now I've talked about how the game is built around making the player feel helpless and powerless and does a good job at that, but a piece of entertainment can be artsy as fuck and not be at all enjoyable. So was the game fun? Does it still hold up being fun despite its age? Did it not focus so much on immersing you and everything to the point where it became boring? It y yes No, it what? How do I word my fucking response to my own question? The game is still fun, it's still enjoyable. Shooting enemies, defending yourself against waves of enemies, solving any puzzles, making it past any obstacles, it's enjoyable. It's also super satisfying. Satisfying in the way that when you're faced with a challenge, it'll let you watch your hard work pay off. And you feel relieved that you did it. And just an added thing, feeling helpless or scared is fun. Why do you think people watch scary movies? It makes you feel alive. Although that's completely untrue because you're playing video games. So the reality is the exact opposite. It's fun. In fact, I'm sure more of you hardcore gamers could have more fun than me, just because you'd probably be better at it. I'm sorry. Yeah, look at that mom.